Okay, and then we'll get this running. Okay, <clears throat> let's uh, let's take a look. Okay, so we left off on Monday, and we said if uh, so, we said a Markov chain is defined by its transition kernel if it's a continuous thing, or a transition matrix if it's a discrete distribution. Okay, or if if it's got discrete states. So. Um, and we said the Markov chain will, if it has these uh, properties in that it is irreducible and aperiodic, according to ergodic theorem, it will converge to its stationary distribution eventually. Okay. So, um, so we've got a Markov chain defined by its transition matrix P, and we said that eventually it will converge to its stationary distribution and so the stationary distribution that corresponds to a um, Markov chains matrix P will be the distribution where when you take that distribution pi you multiply it by its transition matrix you still get pi back you get the same vector back okay and, uh, and I asked if this form looks kind of familiar, uh, where you take a vector, multiply it by a matrix, and you get the vector itself back. Okay? And what, what does that kind of look like? It kind of looks like eigenvectors of a matrix, right? So if you recall, eigenvectors, okay, you'll have. Um, some matrix A, and then um, vector V, and we usually say A times V is equal to lambda V, okay? Or, uh, and if this is true, then V is an eigenvector of A. Okay, or this is a matrix and this is a scalar. Okay, um, we have something a little, uh, something similar, okay, for stationary distributions. We have um, vector P and vector pi and matrix P. Okay, and we want to get basically 1 times pi. Okay, and it turns out because we've switched the position of the vector in the matrix, um, basically pi turns out to be um, uh, you know, this is true if pi is an eigenvector of the transpose of p, okay? And, uh, and that's um, just because we've swapped. In the general matrix form of eigenvectors, you have the matrix times the vector. In here, we've got the vector times the matrix, okay? So with stationary distributions, um, if pi is an eigenvector of P transpose, then um, pi times P will equal pi. Okay, where pi is a vector and P is a matrix. Right? And so um, earlier we had our transition matrix P be something like um, from our current to our next states. A and B, and uh, and we left off. We said this was, I forget what it was. 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6. OK, 
Okay. All right. So then um, we'll just ask R to find the uh, eigenvectors of P transpose, and that will give us the stationary distribution. All right, so we'll do uh, P is going to be, let's R bind um, 0.7 and 0.3 along with 0.4 and 0.6. All right. And then uh, let's ask for the transpose of P. All right, so that's the transpose of P. And then we'll ask for eigen of the transpose of P. And we get um, 0 0.8, 0 0.6, okay, for our kind of our first eigenvector. So, um, so we'll ask for eigen of the transpose of p. Okay, so p is basically um, Okay, and then this um, produces, as far as vectors go, we have 0.8 and 0.6. The, uh, the first column is going to be our first eigenvector, okay? So the eigenvectors are in columns. The other one is point, negative 0.707 and positive 0 0.707. Okay. So this is basically our um, our first eigenvector. Okay. Um, the thing about p is that the sum of the p's have to equal 1. So basically uh, pi is going to be proportional to the vector 0 0.8, 0 0.6. So I just take the sum of this and pi will be um, equal to 0 0.8 divided by 1.4 and 0 0.6 divided by 1.4. Is that okay? Which uh, ends up being um, 4 sevenths and 3 sevenths. Um, when you ask R for its eigenvectors, it gives it so that uh, 0 0.8 squared plus 0 0.6 squared equals 1, but when we're looking for a stationary distribution, we need the uh, the values themselves to add up to 1. Okay, so we just uh, divide each one by the sum. Okay, so then I can kind of, uh, I can program this. I'm going to call this um, st for stationary. This is going to be 4 sevenths and 3 sevenths. Okay. So here's uh, my stationary distribution. Here's p. And we can see if, indeed, the stationary distribution times p indeed gives me exactly the same thing back, right? So the stationary is 0.5714 and 0.4286. When I do the stationary distribution times p, I get 0.5714 and 0.4286. So indeed, we see the stationary distribution times the transition matrix P gives us pi back, right? So indeed, so if I do um, 4 sevenths comma 3 sevenths multiplied by 0 0.7, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, You know, I can get, uh, well, you can do the math. <laughs> I don't feel like doing it right now. Okay? But you get four sevenths and three sevenths back. Okay? All right. And, and so all, all to say is that we can take the eigenvectors of the transition matrix and get its stationary distribution, or tra transpose of the transition matrix. 
And the ergodic theorem says that um, no matter where you start, it will converge to the stationary distribution. Okay, so just we can um, we can start with pi equal to one zero, and if we uh, if we multiply it by p, okay, then uh, and I think this is what, what we did over here. We started with one zero. After we multiply by p, we get 0 0.7, 0 0.3, um, and then and then if you multiply that by p, you know you'll get something else. Dot 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 dot. You keep multiplying by p, so basically one zero uh, p raised to the um, this is like matrix exponentiation. Okay, um, I'll, I'll say pi raised to the n, okay, will converge to pi as n goes to infinity, all right? And it's, it's really any distribution. So I can start off with 0, 1, the, uh, you know, the opposite. As I raise p to the n, this will also converge as n goes to infinity. So no matter what starting point, if you keep applying p to the um, to the distribution, it's going to converge to its stationary distribution. Okay? So let me just kind of demo that here. So I'm going to just start off with um, A will be uh, the matrix uh, 1 comma 0, all right, and the number of rows will equal 1, okay? So I can print A, and it looks like this. And what we're going to do is we are going to do A multiplied by the transition matrix P. And then we'll ask for it to print A. Okay. So after one iteration, I get 0.7.3. Maybe I'll uh, move this up here. So each time I'm going to just repeat the same thing. I'm going to update A by multiplying it by P. Okay. Um, I do it again, and I get 0 0.61, 0 0.39. That's uh, I think that's what we showed on Monday. So one times the one zero times the matrix P gives me 0 0.7.3 times the matrix P again gives me 0 0.61, 0 0.39. Okay. If I do this again. I get 0 0.583, 0 0.417. I do this again, 0 0.5749, 0 0.4251. And I keep doing this, and we can see that the distribution here, the value of A, um, eventually reaches this point where it doesn't change anymore. 0 0.5714286, 0 0.4285714. And that's exactly equal to four sevenths and three sevenths. Okay. If uh, if A started off with something totally different, zero and one. Okay. So we can ask to print out A. A looks like this. When I apply the transition matrix, I get 0 0.4, 0 0.6, and I keep applying the transition matrix to it. we can see it gets closer and closer and closer until uh, it reaches a point where the values no longer change. So at this point, it's converged to the, uh, the stationary distribution. And you know, comparing it to our known stationary distribution of 4 sevenths and 3 sevenths, we see that they're exactly the same. Okay. So you know, this is just uh, the simplest case with two states. But it, it applies for um, you know other distributions with a lot more states. So um, you know no matter how crazy or bad your starting location is, your starting distribution, as you apply the transition matrix, as you continue drawing values from this Markov chain, it it converges to the uh, stationary distribution. Okay, and that's what that's what their uh, ergodic theorem states.
Okay. Um, so now, so we know that if we have a Markov chain and transition matrix that um, exhibits these ergodic properties, eventually the Markov chain will um, draw values that have that come from its stationary distribution. Okay. So um, ergodic theorem. states that, you know, um, a Markov chain will, you know, generate values um, from its stationary distribution, okay, uh, eventually. <laughs> okay, we'll eventually generate values from its stationary distribution. So the task now is can we design a Markov chain whose stationary distribution is equivalent to our desired target distribution, OK? Okay. And when we talk about designing a Markov chain, that basically means, you know, can we figure out what, what the transition matrix should be? Because the Markov chain is de design, defined by its transition matrix or transition kernel. Okay. When we talk about design a Markov chain, figure out the transition matrix or transition slash transition kernel. So we want to figure out a transition matrix or transition kernel that will give us the target distribution that we want. Okay? All right. So, um, The answer comes in the form of what's known as the Metropolis algorithm. So the answer is yes, we can, and the solution is the Metropolis algorithm. Okay. So uh, yes, we can make such a Markov chain, and uh, the way we do it. is via Metropolis algorithm. Okay, Metropolis is a person's name. All right. Um, the the legend is that it was <coughs> Professor Metropolis's student or someone on his team that actually came up with the thing, but being um, academia as it is, you know, the guy in charge gets to stamp his name on, on the stuff. So anyway, um, OK. But uh, we'll do it with the Metropolis algorithm. And um, let's see, do I want to tell you the algorithm now? Or, um, well, here, we'll, we'll, go, we'll do our example, OK? So um, we'll do it via the Metropolis algorithm, uh, which I will describe later. <laughs> All right, so um, here's our uh, silly scenario. Okay, we have uh, there's some island nation, island country, consists of seven islands. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in a row. All right. And the population of the islands are proportional 
to its island number, okay? Populations of each island of, uh, of the islands are proportional to the island number. Okay, so if if there's a thousand residents on island one, then there's two thousand residents on island two, and six thousand residents on island six. Okay, if there's a hundred uh, thousand on island one, then there's four hundred thousand on island four. Okay, so whatever it is, it's just proportional to it. The thing is, is we don't really know. <laughs> We don't know the actual uh, island populations, okay? Okay, and then uh, and then there's a politician who's campaigning, and he wants to uh, visit the islands. Um, in proportion to its population, okay? He wants to visit the heavily populated islands more and the smaller populated islands less, okay? But he doesn't even know about this thing about the islands being proportional to its, to its number, okay? Wants to uh, visit the islands to campaign. And uh, he wants to visit, um, you know, with a rate relative <coughs> to the island's proportion or island's population. Okay, so our target distribution. is going to be equal to basically one-seventh, two-sevenths, uh, not sevenths, uh, 28, right? Because uh, one through seven add up to 28. So it's going to be one over 28, two over 28, three over 28, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera to 7 over 28, okay? This is our target distribution, but we don't know this, okay? We do not know, the po politician does not know the target distribution. Because if you knew the target distribution, um, if you knew the target distribution, you can just sample from it directly, okay? Or, or you know, the, at least in this illustrative example, we're trying to say that uh, for whatever reason it's difficult to sample directly from the target distribution, we're going to do, do something different, okay? So this is our target distribution, and we want to set up our chain so that in the end we will end up visiting the <laughs> islands uh, with a proportion related to the the target distribution. All right, and so this is this is how the uh, how our system will work. So this is, will be our method. Okay. So at every interval, we're going to visit an island. Okay. So we will. Visit it. Uh, we will, I guess, make a campaign. I don't know. Make a visit every day. Okay, so this is how it will work. At at the beginning of the day, we propose one of the adjacent islands.
with a coin flip. Okay? So if we're currently at four, at four, then um, heads, we propose three, and tails means we propose five. Uh, you know, if you're at, if we are at island zero, <coughs> I mean, sorry, island one, heads, we propose uh, zero, island zero, which doesn't exist, and tails. We propose island two. Okay, so just heads you'll propose the island to your left, tails you'll propose the island to your right. Okay, and and you might propose islands that don't exist, which is fine. Okay, all right. So we propose an island, and then we decide: should I go there or should I stay put? Okay, so it's not a it, it is like you're going to either accept or reject your proposal, but if you reject, it doesn't mean um, you're not going to make a campaign visit at all. You're just going to stay on your current island and make another campaign visit on the current island. Okay, so, so after proposing the island, you have to decide whether to go or not. We will either uh, go to the proposed island or we will stay at our current island, okay? And so the probability of going to the proposed island is going to equal the population of the proposed island divided by the population of the current. Okay. Um, if this value is greater than 1, then obviously uh, the probability will just be 1. Okay. So we might say the pr probability of moving is going to be equal to the minimum of 1 and p the population of the proposed divided by population of current. Okay, So this will be the probability of whether you move or not. So you figure out your probability of moving. And then you move with that probability. So so uh, move with probability equal to p move. So basically, just you generate a u from uniform 0, 1. Okay? And if u is less than p move, go to the proposed island. And if u is greater than p move, um, stay at the current island. Okay, and then so wherever you end up, you'll make another visit. Okay, so even if you don't move, you're going to you'll stay at your current island and you make another visit at your current island. Okay. So even if you do not move, you still make a visit at the current
current island. So you're still... Um, you're not losing a day, you just, you're making a, a visit here, okay? So let's just, um, let's just see what happens, okay? So if we are at, Island four, okay. Let's uh, let's find the probabilities of where we end up next. Okay. So our current probability probability distribution, if we're right now at island four, is going to be 0, 0, 0. This is 1, 2, 3, 1, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, this is our current distribution. There's a probability of 1 that we are at island four because that is where we are right now. Okay, what are what is uh, the probability? Let's find the distribution of where we might end up tomorrow. Okay. Okay, so this being island one, island two, island three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so I'm going to just go ahead, island one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay, so if we're at island one, is there any chance that I'll end up, I mean, if we're at island four, is there any chance I'll end up at island one tomorrow? Okay, so the way we, we're going to make moves is I'm at my island, current island, and I flip a coin to either propose island three or island five, okay? And after I propose something, I decide, well, maybe I'll go there or maybe I won't, okay? So there's no chance that I'll end up at island one or two, or six, or seven. Okay, all of these have probability zero, right? Okay, let's figure out what is the probability I end up at island five, okay? How would I end up at island five? To end up at island five, what has to ha happen? Okay. I would, the, the coin has to land tails, because that means we propose island five. So the coin must land tails, so that happens with probability one half. And then, and then I have to move there, right? So the probability of moving is the population of the proposed divided by the population of the current, okay? So what's the uh, population of the proposed island? We don't know, we just know it's five times some mystery number k. And what's the population of the current island? I don't know, it's, it's 4k, right? Because it's just proportional to its number, okay? So the probability of moving is gonna be five over four or 1.25 which just means the probability of moving is going to be 1. So the probability of ending at island 5 is I have to propose it, and then I have to move there, so it's going to be 1 half times 1. I will end up at island 5 with probability 1 half. Is that okay? All right. Um, let's talk about ending up at island 3. To end up at three, so the coin must land tails. I'm sorry, must land heads. So that happens with probability one half. Okay, and then if I propose island three, then the probability of moving is going to be p propose 
divided by p current. So the island of popul island three has a population of three k versus the population of island four, which has a population of four k. So my probability of moving is only 0.75. So I'm going to propose island three, but island three is a smaller island than my current island. So maybe maybe it's not worth going. Maybe I shouldn't just blindly go to island three. Okay. And so the total probability of going to island three is one half times 0.75, and I get 0.375. So three eighths. Okay. And so the leftover probability must be the probability of remaining at island four. And there's actually two ways of remaining at island four. One is probability propose three, but don't go to three, plus propose five, but don't go to five. Okay, so this is going to be one half times one fourth plus one half times zero, and we get one eighth. Because that I propose island three with probability one half. I go to three with probability three fourths, which means I won't go to three with probability one fourth. Okay. So and then if I propose five, I'm definitely going to island five. It's got a bigger population than my current island, so the algorithm says we definitely want to go to these islands that are more populous. Okay. So we get we get this. Okay. So this is the distribution of where we will end up. If I'm currently at island four, where I will end up at the next turn, okay? And we can actually set up the entire transition matrix for our and I, and I think this is going to be in your next homework. The entire transition matrix for the island hopping. scenario, okay, and we basically have, you know, your current, it can be at island 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, and then for the next, you're going to end up at islands 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7, okay, and in this row, the row for 4 is going to be what we just found, 0, 0, 3 eighths, 1 eighth, 1 half, 0, and 0. Okay. And then we can go through and we can see, you know, what is a, let's look at, let's just say, what if I'm currently at island 1? Okay, let's, let's work on the row, row 1. Okay, so what we just found represents this row of if I'm currently at island four, where will I end up next? Okay, let's say I'm currently at island one, where will I end up next? Okay. Okay, so uh, if we're at island one, I can either, on the next turn, when I because I'm flipping a coin, and I'm either going to propose 0 or propose island 2, right? So on the next turn, I can only end up really at island 1 or island 2, if I'm, if I'm at island 1, OK? So we can flip the coin, OK? Heads, we propose island 0, and tails, We propose island two. Okay, so let's say probability of going to island zero 
Okay, so first we have to flip heads. This happens with probability one half. And then the probability of moving to island zero is going to be the probability of the proposed divided by the probability of the current. Okay? Or, so the population of island zero is zero, it doesn't exist. Okay? Divided by our current is one. So the probability of going to island zero is zero. Okay, let's talk about the probability of going to island two. Okay, I have to flip tails. That happens with probability one half. And then the probability of moving is going to be probability of the proposed divided by the probability of the current. Okay, island two has a population of 2k versus island one, which has a probability population of 1k. This is going to give me a probability of 2, which means the probability of moving has to be 1. Okay, You can't, can't use 2. <laughs> okay, So the probability of going to island 2 is going to be 1 half times 1, 1 half. Okay? Which means the probability of staying at island 1 can happen in one of two ways. We propose zero and don't go, plus propose two and don't go. Okay, So we propose zero with one half, and we don't go with probability one. We propose island two with probability one half, and we don't go with probability zero. This ends up being one half. So filling out the top row of the matrix, we get 1 half, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay? And we can use this kind of set of rules to fill out the rest of our matrix. Okay? And if we do fill out the rest of the matrix using these rules, we will end up getting um, a transition matrix whose uh, stationary distribution is exactly equal to the, um, the distribution that we want, the target distribution where um, the, the populations are in proportion to its island number. Okay? All right, we'll, uh, we'll further explore this on, uh, on Friday, okay? All right, with that, uh, have a good day. Have a great, uh, have a happy Halloween.